Hello again everyone and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. We are here uh, in the Gully, I believe it is called, and we are currently trying to find Solus to save him from the Vidasala, as they see as the here in the Canary seem determined to um to hunt him down and kill him. Oh my god, that's a brutal attack. That is absolutely devastating beyond belief. So us in the Inquis Inquisition are now very much aware of, 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 of how Solus is an agent of Fen'Harel. But I believe he is Fen'Harel. In the same way that... In the same way that that, that Mithal sort of took the form of um, Flemeth. Or sort of lived in Flemeth's body. I think I think uh, Fen'Harel is, is Solus. And I, I'm pretty sure the, the post credit scene of Inquisition... It's heavily implied that as well, so... But I'm sure we will receive absolute confirmation soon. Let's discharge this again. Wasn't as strong this time because we only had one bar, but still. Dead. Dead, dead, dead. Right. So we're almost at the end of this bridge now. The anchor's going crazy. Well, it's got, it's prime primarily because it, need, it needs to discharge. Can we draw this guy in? We can't hang out anymore. Jesus. I do I do enjoy the new the new anchor ability to be honest. It's 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 goddamn devastating, but it's good. Right, we can resupply this cash as well. Good stuff. Let's get through this alluvian. We've got ourselves a solace to save. Shrine to the Dread Wolf. Oh this this could be a culmination of everything right now, I think. It would be a very appropriate arena to do it in as well. Mm. Fight Sarath, get to Solus before the Vidasala. So this is the Sarabas. This is the big Sarabas. Well, well, we can use the mark now. Did that... Did that not work? I don't think that worked, you know. Well, we'll, we'll use this one then. That definitely hurt Sarath. I don't know if if how long this fight goes on is determined in 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 our ability to make it to Solus in time, but I'm gonna try and get it done as quickly as possible. But it's not an easy fight anymore, you know. These 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 aren't the fights that 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 we were doing at the start of the game. Sorry, at the end of the game, I should say. They are not easy at all. Right, Sar Be ready. They have reinforcements. I think we've got more than reinforcements. Reinforcements is putting it quite lightly right now, Cassandra. Okay. Can we get it to Sarath? In his massive barrier over there. I think that is only saving him from projectiles right now. Oh, he's, he's launching around all over the place. Oh, shit! Oh, we forgot about the mark. We forgot about the mark. Need to stop doing that. Really need to stop doing that. Right, we broke his barrier. Hit him with everything. Hit him with everything. Oh, damn. Damn, 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 damn. Let's use Revival. And back to full capacity. I imagine we're going to get some more reinforcements any minute now. The Sarath's taking quite a bit of damage now. Yeah. 
Yeah. Where's he gone now? There he is. Oh, he drew, he drew us in there. Oh, what's he doing now? Is he... It seems the Cerebas is no longer following orders. He's no longer following orders? Oh, well, we have to discharge anyway. Oh, boy. So, the Vidasala Sarabas has now gone completely rogue. That's... I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing at this point, to be completely honest. It, it could be either. It's down a health portion. I, I, I did see a supply cache down there, so, so we should be fine to be quite liberal with our healing right now. Right, carry on, carry on, carry on. Heal. Heal. Resupply. And we're gonna have to discharge here. Oh my good god. Right, no, not, not one step back at this point. Oh my god, the, the fucking gibbing is unbelievable. I see an Alluvian. I see an Alluvian. Oh boy. Oh, look at all the canary. Look at all the canary. <laughs> uh, that's... The joys of having a mark, am I right? Got a shit ton of spearmen up there ready for us. I'm gonna get up here and try and get this dude up here. I'm cutting him to shreds. There we go. There's a Luvian to the side there. I don't know what that represents exactly. Let's let's discharge. Oh my lord. I'm trying. That's easier said than done right now. There is a lot of canary here. I really hope these guys aren't just going to start spawning infinitely. I mean, it's a possibility at this point. There seems to be absolutely, absolutely shit tons of them. Smack them up. Oh no, we forgot to discharge again. Ah, oh, damn it, I'm so sorry, Dorian. I didn't mean it, I swear. The amount of times I keep on forgetting about the, uh, about the build-up of focus. Right, I think that's all the canary did. How, how, are we able to go through any of these other? Uh, you know what? I'm not. I'm not even going to bother. I'm not going to bother at this rate. I think. I, th I think it was because we desperate. We desperately need, need to discharge as well. Oh, it refreshed. 
Thank, thank God. Right, so let's resupply. My soul is dust. Oh, this is a this is a definitely an arena. Come at me then. What have you got? Oh, the big dude's back. What a surprise. Is he hulking up? Uh, it kind of was. Jesus, this guy. This guy's a right asshole. He's got a lot of health as well. He's not taking a great deal of damage. Where's he gone? Where's he gone? I need to discharge the mark on him. Oh god, there's freaking demons? What? Watch out, watch out. Where are the shades coming from? Is, it, it, is this because of my mark? I can only assume that this that this is because of my mark. Either way, I'm focusing the majority of my attacks on the Sarath anyway. I should be able to get some of the demons with my uh, mark ability in a second. Yep, discharge it now. Oh my god. Beautiful. This is absolute bedlam, honestly. Absolute bedlam. We've almost got him though, we've almost got him. He's down to about maybe 15% health at the minute, so... More shades have appeared, but... I think we should be able to hold him off. The music is fantastic in this fight as well, must be said. Where's Sarath gone? He's gone all the way over there. Oh, you're gonna go. That's a good bit of damage. Can we get him? Can we get him? Can we get him? Oh, freaking pride demons appeared now. He's just standing there menacingly, but... Hits him with the death blow. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Oh. Oh my lord. D Dorian's was just briefly beheaded. We've we've lost all of our party apparently. But honestly, at this point it doesn't matter. Right. Let's exit let's exit this arena. Let's just hope we aren't too late. Oh, it's closed. It it's just me. Whoa my god. Have they all been turned to stone? What the frick has happened here? We're all just frozen in battle. We seen these initially, didn't we, in the crossroads? We seen a load, a load of these guys that are like frozen in place. That's Solus. I recognise that voice. And that's the Vidasala. Leave now and tell the Canari to trouble me no further. <laughs> oh, dear me. Solus.
Did he... Did he fix it? That should give us more time. More time? Oh no! You work f You work for Fen Harrell? The Kunari believe you're an agent for someone who has taken the name Fen Harrell. The Kunari reject myth and legend. If you told them of your meeting with Mithor, they would attribute it to a demon. I am no one's agent but my own. I fear that the truth is much simpler and much worse than the Kunari believe. You're Fen Harrell. Of course he is. I was Solus first. Fen Harrell came later. An insult I took as a badge of pride. The Dread Wolf inspired hope in my friends and fear in my enemies. Not unlike Inquisitor, I suppose. You also know the burden of a title that all but replaces your name. Oh god, we can attack him. No, I'm not going to attack him. To be fair, he, he did fight for freedom. The the the, the, the en en Enuvaris were not like noble people. They enslaved a lot of elves. The Dalish legends about the evil trickster god are wrong. I saw the truth in the crossroads. You saw another story. Written in desperation to give you more credit than I ever deserved. Oh. You were a hero, Solus. I sought to set my people free from slavery to would-be gods. I broke the chains of all who wished to join me. The false gods called me Fen Harel, and when they finally went too far, I formed the veil and banished them forever. Thus I freed the elven people, and in so doing, destroyed their world. You love the Fade. Why would you create the veil to hide it all away? Because every alternative was worse. Meaning? Had I not created the veil, the Evanuris would have destroyed the entire world. You banished the false gods. You didn't kill them. You met Methol, did you not? The first of my people do not die so easily. The Evanuris are banished forever, paying the ultimate price for their misdeeds. You said that the elven gods went too far. What did they do that made you move against them? They killed Mithor. <laughs> A crime for which an eternity of torment is the only fitting punishment. I thought Mithal was one of the Evanuris. She was the best of them. She cared for her people. She protected them. She was a voice of reason. And in their lust for power, they killed her. But... Eh... But we saw Solus take the power of Mithal as well. How did creating the veil destroy the world? You saw the remains of Viadathara. The library was intrinsically tied to the Fade, and the veil destroyed it. There were countless other marvels, all dependent on the presence of the Fade. All destroyed. The elven legends of immortality. All true. It was not the arrival of humans that caused them to begin aging. It was Fen Harel. The veil took everything from the elves, even themselves. The Evanuris were elven mages. How did they come to be remembered as gods? Slowly. It started with a war. War breeds fear. Fear breeds a desire for simplicity. Good and evil. Right and wrong. Chains of command. After the war ended, generals became respected elders. Then kings. Finally gods. The Avenuris. What happens next? That's yeah. the past. What about the future? I lay in dark and dreaming sleep while countless wars and ages passed. I woke still weak a year before I joined you. My people fell for what I did to strike the Evanuris down. But still, some hope remains for restoration. I will save the elven people. Even if it means this world must die. Oh, dear me. So, Fen, so Fen Harel, in an attempt to free the elven people, also basically destroyed them. They... He saved them, but also destroyed their world in the process to let them live another life. One which 
is better in some way and worse than in others. I. Why is that necessary? Why does this world have to die for the elves to return? A good question, but not one I will answer. You have always shown a thoughtfulness I respected. It would be too easy to tell you too much. I am not Corypheus. I take no joy in this. But the return of my people means the end of yours. So let's don't do this. Fight. You should be more concerned about the Inquisition. Your Inquisition. In stopping the dragon's breath, you have prevented an invasion by Canari forces. With luck, they will return their focus to Devinta. That should give you a few years of relative peace. I don't know if it's going to be that easy, to be honest. The Canari said the Inquisition was unknowingly working for agents of Fen Harel. I gave no orders. You led us to Skyhold. Corypheus should have died unlocking my orb. When he survived, my plans were thrown into chaos. When you survived, I saw the Inquisition as the best hope this world had of stopping him. And you needed a home. Hence, Skyhold. So that was what... I, I did ask the question, didn't I? How Solus knew about it. This That explains it. You gave your orb to Corypheus. Not directly. My agents allowed the Vanatori to locate it. The orb had built up magical energy while I lay unconscious for millennia. I was not powerful enough to open it. The plan was for Corypheus to unlock it, and for the resulting explosion to kill him. Then I would claim the orb. I did not foresee a Devinta Magister having learned the secret of effective immortality. What would have happened if Corypheus had died and you had recovered the orb? I would have entered the Fade using the mark you now bear. Then I would have torn down the veil. As this world burned in the raw chaos, I would have restored the world of my time. The world of the Elves. If you destroyed the Veil, wouldn't the False Gods be freed? I had plans. You had plans? Uh, truly? I never thought of you as someone who would do that, Solus. Thank you. You must understand. I awoke in a world where the Veil had blocked most people's conscious connection to the Fade. It was like walking through a world of tranquil. We aren't even people to you. Not at first. You showed me that I was wrong. Again. That does not make what must come next any easier. Well, I appreciate it, yeah. Whatever your reasons, we couldn't have defeated Corypheus without you. Your doubts are misplaced. Everything you accomplished, you earned. What's wrong with the Inquisition? You created a powerful organization. And now it suffers the inevitable fate of such. Betrayal and corruption. It's not that simple. Do you know how I discovered the Canari plot? The plot I disrupted by leading them to your doorstep. Yeah, how? The Canari spies in the Inquisition tripped over my spies in the Inquisition. The Elven Guard who led you to the Canari body? Who intercepted the servant with the Gatlock barrel? My oh, body. wow. Why bother disrupting the Canari plot if you're going to destroy the world regardless? You have shown me that there is value in this world, Inquisitor. I take no joy in what I must do. Until that day comes, I would see those recovering from the breach free of the Kuhn. Why? Because I am not a monster. If they must die, I would rather they die in comfort. In any event, it is done. <sighs> you, you, you can't help but not only completely disagree with what he's doing but also you hold respect for the way he's trying to do it like you understand what he's been through thanks I guess we owe you for that one too I hope it gives your people some final peace you control the Alluvians now yes <laughs> you remember Briala from Halam Shiral for a time she controlled part of the labyrinth one of my agents was supposed to take it from her but he did not succeed. I had to override the magic personally. The Canaris stumbled upon this section independently. With them gone, the Alluvians are now mine. What about the Mark? There's still the matter of the Anchor. It's getting worse. Yes. I'm sorry. And we are almost out of time. Can he not do anything? Kill 
Throwing you here gave me the chance to save you. At least for now. The Inquisition will try to convince Solus to change his plan, or the Inquisition will stop Solus even if it means killing him. Yes, we'll go with that. You don't need to destroy this world. I'll prove it to you. I would treasure the chance to be wrong once again, my friend. Take my hand. I'm sorry. Live well, while time remains. Did he just buy us even more time? Essentially? Jesus, what an absolute blockbuster of an ending that was. Honestly, that Solus is an absolutely fantastic character. You know, Fen Harrell especially, like even like the way he was written and even in, in, in law, he's absolutely fascinating. Gen genuinely fascinating. So what happens now? There is still the matter of the Exalted Council. What happens to the Inquisition? Can we can we keep can we keep ourselves going knowing what is looming over us the potential of Solus slash Fen Harel destroying our world in an attempt to rebuild the elven the elven kingdom of old Three, something must be done but we cannot lose the inquisition now we stand on the brink of war with the canary Yes, because this Solas provoked them in the first place. The Inquisition did not cause this threat. We informed the summit of the danger. The danger posed by Konari spies inside your organization. Without our organization, none of us would be here to complain. <sighs> no one has forgotten what you have done. But Corypheus is two years dead. If the Inquisition is to continue, it must do so as a legitimate organization, not a glorified mercenary band. Inquisitor. Oh God, did he... Did he take my hand off? Is that... Is that what he did? Oh, good God. Oh God, we, we, we have choices now. The Inquisition, will, the, the Inquisition will serve Divine Victoria. Efforts against Solus will be stronger but risk corruption. The Inquisition will serve Divine Victoria. Efforts against Solus will be stronger but risk corruption. Or the Inquisition will, will be disbanded. Efforts against Solus will be weaker but more secure. Is this is this the choice now? Does the Inquisition carry on at, at risk of corruption, or does it or does it disband? We need more oversight. You all know what this is. A writ from Divine Justinia authorizing the formation of the Inquisition. We pledge to close the breach, find those responsible, and restore order, with or without anyone's approval. You're right, Altegan. We are dangerous. We've been deceived and we've made mistakes. You're right as well, Duke Cyril. These are the growing pains of a young organization in need of guidance. But you would both have the Inquisition bow to your agenda. And that is precisely what we cannot do. The Inquisition will act as Divine Victoria's personal honor guard. Answering directly to her, we will transition from a military force into a peacekeeping organization. My own adventuring days may be done, but the Inquisition and its mission will continue. Well said. Brilliantly said. And Cassandra herself definitely agrees. I believe there's a way for us to convince Solus to change his plan. I believe he's, he's level-headed enough to, 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 to listen to, to reason.
<laughs> Is that swords and shields? Well, that's that then. That is the Inquisition. The Inquisition will continue, but not, not as it was. We will, we will keep the peace and no more, no less. I hope. Everyone walks away one by one. And still see the remainders of the, of, of that of that tower in the sky. Oh. Oh, Cassandra came back. Stand with us. Over the next several months, the Inquisition carefully gave over many of the duties it, it had held. I hope I don't have to click anything here, because if... Ah, as the Divine's personal guard and peacekeeping force, the Inquisition shrank to a more manageable size. Many who had served went home, th though the remaining force was still enough to give pause to any who might threaten the Divine's plans. That is exactly what we need. Those who served the new Inquisition were tested and checked thoroughly in the hope of ferreting out any more spies w w within its ranks. Especially no more Canary ones. When the dragon's breath disrupted and any hope of a swift victory dashed, the Canara retreated back to the north. As the only other option they had is a full-blown war, and that's clearly not what they want. Few knew what debates were waged in Parvolum, but not long after the Exalted Council, the Canari launched new attacks against Tavinta. Ooh. Well, the Canari never liked Tavinta, did they? Their aggression caught the already unstable Imperium off guard. Tavinta was soon mired in a war many fear could spread across Theodas. Oh, Jesus Christ. Cassandra continued her reign as Divine Victoria, rebuilding fractured alliances and settling the Inquisition into its new role as her personal guard. Her efforts were successful, and for a time, Th Southern Thedas saw peace. Well, we always believed in Cassandra, didn't we? We always knew that she could do it. Although it, do it does implicate for a time. Cassandra also spent time in the Hunterhorn Mountains north of Orlea, where she worked to rebuild the Seekers. Of course, the Seekers always held a personal vested interest for her, didn't they? For a time, the new Seekers remained reclusive, showing no interest in worldly affairs and working to a purpose few outside their order could guess. That's a bit... that's a bit, um, cryptic, isn't it? While Divine Victoria can never marry, it was obvious that she remained close to the Inquisitor. Well... This is a great shame. Their romance, impossible as it was sincere, became the subject of courtly songs about the woman who went to the Maker, leaving the man she loved. It's a good tale, and also... A definite... But always glancing back and smiling when she saw that he was there. A definite nod to duty over uh, over the d duty over passion, I think, is uh, is a good way to put it. Some believe that the end, at the end of the Inquisition, as it had been her uh, as it had been heralded, the destruction of the fledgling College of Enchanters. Having clashed with the Circle, the College now found itself without support against the newly elected Grand Enchanter Vivienne. So she was like the Grand Enchanter, which is basically, well, yeah, we knew it was coming. Fortunately, Grand Enchanter Vivienne grudgingly agreed to not destroy its terrified leaders as a personal favour to, to Divine Victoria. <laughs> Thanks, Vivienne, really appreciate that. The two institutions settled into an uneasy coexistence across the south, vying for power.
Liliana continued to act as the Inquisition's spy master in its final, final months as an independent organisation. During this time, she shared many of her responsibilities with her most trusted agents, including Charter, Rector, and Harding. Well, you can always, always trust Harding. Harding is the most trustworthy of them all. Many believe that Liliana feared what lay on the horizon and was grooming successes in anticipation of the challenges ahead. Did she fear death or assassination? Sarah left the Inquisition with scarcely more than ties, scarcely more ties than when she began, disappearing back into a confusing weave of favours and friends. After seeing the world brought to the brink by arrogance and pride, it was a blessing to return to normal, however strange and normal it might be. Yeah, she's a very strange individual, is, is our Sarah. With frequent visits to her Whittle, of course. Who? Whittle? Who is Whittle? Whittle? Perhaps most unnerving was Sarah's standing offer to the Divine. Which is... When the knobs piss about with your left hand or right, call on Red Jenny to give them two fingers. <laughs> Bloody hell, even, even Red Jenny herself is, a, is, a, is an agent of, of Divine Victoria. Varric returned to Kirkwall, whereas Viscounty resumed his work rebuilding the damaged infrastructure. He looks absolutely thrilled with the, with the idea, doesn't he? Under his rule, the city-state finally resumed its, its place as the major trade hub of the Free Marches. Took a long time getting there, but it was worth it. He continues to ignore all mail from both the Merchant's Guild and the Prince of Starkhaven. <laughs> With the Inquisition in its new role, the Bulls' charges returned to taking jobs throughout uh, Orlane for Elden. Oh, I hope, uh, I hope, I hope Bull and Krem uh, got on well. Fighting demons and clearing out the remains of Venatory forces, the Iron Bull did his part to restore order to Thedas. After the Inquisition transitioned to a peacekeeping role, Cullen continued to serve as commander of its forces. Good, there could be no better commander to have than Cullen. Under his leadership, the Inquisition protected the Divine's interests while enforcing new standards of security. Colin also expanded the Chantry's treatment for Templars whose minds were taken by Lyrium as well as those who wished to cease Lyrium usage. Oh, good. Again, a very personal sort of uh, mission there for Colin. And as chaos reigned in the north and threats of the Divine lurked in every shadow, Colin remained ready to serve. Fine man, Colin. Could not ask, could not ask for, 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 a better, for a better ally and friend. Dorian returned to Devinter to take his father's place in the Magisterium. As rumours flew about the, the Imperium's infighting, Dorian was spoken of often as a voice of resistance against corruption. Dorian, one of the one of one of the truly noble Vince. Along with Magister M uh, Mavaris Talani, he formed a group called the Lucerne to restore and redeem Tavinta, a fight many thought hopeless. Those fighting by Magister Pavis' side noted that he kept in constant communication with the Inquisitor via message crystal. Oh, he did, didn't he? He gave us it as a gift. Also, couldn't ask for a better friend than Dorian. Whether for vital information or for moral support, these talks seem to give Dorian the strength to continue his fight. Good. I'm very glad to hear that. 
After the Exalted Council, Tom Rainier bid farewell to his friends and went to Weishaupt Fortress to pledge himself to the Grey Wardens for good. While he was rarely seen in the years that followed, some said they encountered Rainier in far-flung lands, their accounts always similar. Rainier carried out the duty of the Wardens, but always found time to help others along the way. Good. I think... I think Mr. Rainier redeemed himself, didn't he? Despite everything. Sometimes he served as a shield for the defenceless, other times he spread simple cheer among children with gifts of small carved toys. He did always make them, didn't he? What a good man. After easing the Inquisition's transition into the Trantry, Josephine returned to Antiva and her family. Thanks to the Inquisitor's help, the Montilias were once again permitted to trade in all day, and her sister was still making completely balmy paintings. Or plays, or but No, no, it was books, wasn't it? She, she was writing books, or poems. It was, it, was, it was poetry. The next few years were a busy time, as many ships with the Montilia crest were built and set sail again from Antiva's harbours. It's nice that they've returned to prosperity. Soon, Raveni pirate captains with an ancient feud against Josephine's ancestors took to the seas, determined to rekindle the rivalry. Typical. I hope it wasn't Isabella. Apart from Josephine's sister Yvette nearly eloping with a dashing pirate prince on one occasion, Lady Montilia took the development in stride. <laughs> Why am I not surprised about Yvette? Cole returned to the Fade, saying that there were there was no that, saying that there was more pain coming, and that he knew where compassion would be most needed. He promised that his friends in the Inquisition would remember him, and that where the hurt was greatest, he would help. We'll always remember Cole as the as the odd odd helpful little boy he was. After the events at the Winter Palace, elves left the Inquisition under mysterious circumstances, and as did elven servants across Thedas. That is quite suspicious. Given the... No, none could say where they went, but those who believe the Inquisitor's story about Fen and Harel wonder just how large the Dreadwolf's forces were. Yeah. And what the ancient elven rebel had planned. Well, I think it's probably quite highly implied what Dragon Age 4 is going to be about, isn't it? Well, Dragon is it Dragon Age 3? I don't even know. No, no, it'll, it'll be Dragon Age 4. Death of Dragon Age 4. And there's the one-armed Inquisitor. Got an achievement for that, forever marked. Anywhere. That's true. Maintaining the Inquisition, even as a peacekeeping force, leaves us vulnerable to agents of the Dread Wolf. But also gives us the strength to respond. <sighs> we will need to be careful. Solus knows everything about us who we are, how we work, our strengths, and weaknesses. Then we find people he doesn't know. We will save our friend from himself. If we can. To Vinter, the yeah. air. So Dragon Age 4 is probably going to be set in Tavinter then. Well, I think I'm going to end the recording here. I'm going to come back once the credits are finished with. Uh, so I will see you guys very shortly. And there we go, that is the end of Dragon Age Inquisition, the end of Trespasser, the end of the game as a whole, and yeah, what what an ending it was, right? Um, yeah, I think I gave the majority of my thoughts on the main game um, at the end of the credits of the main game, but uh, Trespasser, excellent DLC, it was really, really well well done, um, probably the best DLC of the lot that they made. Um, 
the uh, Jaws of Hakon was close in, in terms of what of, of what that delivered in terms of Inquisitor of Meriden's story, but I did really enjoy this one. Sort of the grand sort of political debate of the Exalted Council, and then and obviously the background sort of scheme and sort of mystery that developed with, with obviously finding the Canary body and then ending up in the crossroads, and then it all kind of culminates in finding. Uh, Fen Harel slash Solus and then learning about him and his uh, motives and character and reasons for, for him doing what he did. You know, he was a really, really well written character. It's fascinating to see how. Because in the main game, he's portrayed largely as a villain. Um, but then when you see his story written, like, told, told truthfully, um he did what he did for good reason like he had the best intentions in mind he had people in mind he had elves in mind he wanted to free slaves from sort of corrupt and um sort of tyrannous leaders uh but in in freeing them in a way he also destroyed the world that they lived in which he also he obviously feels deep regret for and then in in trying to rebuild that world he now thinks that he has to destroy the world that all the other all the other people live in so he's not good or bad he's he's kind of a shade of gray solus you know he he has reasons for doing what he's doing but what he's doing is what he intends to do is obviously bad um but yeah very very good dlc very good character overall very well acted as well his voice actor does deserve credits um but yeah very much enjoyed it very much excited to see where where the next sort of chapter in this series goes. Looks like it's going to be set into Vinter and based around sort of Solus's uh, army against the world. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited to see exactly where it goes. So uh, I think in terms of the Dragon Age games, I think Inquisition. I would put Origins above it in terms of quality. I think. I think Origins was a bit less bloated. I think it's all the fantastic story. I think the mechanics were probably a little bit more RPG-ish. I don't know. I like. I enjoyed the the combat more in Inquisition. Combat in Origins is divisive. I think not my favourite type. It was good, but I prefer this style of combat. But I think the story the Origins told it was still grand. It, uh, but it but it didn't feel bloated. It felt like everything that happened in Origins had a purpose. Well, I think Inquisition had a lot of kind of quests that were put in to fill time. So which, you know, is unavoidable with some open world games these days. It feels like, but um, yeah, I definitely felt an Inquisition. But that's not to take away from the overall quality of the game because it's a fantastic, fantastic game. Truly. Very much enjoyed it. Very much the, enjoyed the story overall. The characters and the party is among the best you'll probably see in in sort of RPG games, in my opinion. Uh, you've you know you got to love the characters, you got to relate to the characters, and uh, yeah, really really enjoyed it. Um, but uh, yeah, that is Dragon Age Inquisition, and I really hope you all have enjoyed the ride, guys. Uh, I will be putting out a poll soon to see what game will be running it running alongside Oblivion for a short while. Oblivion, I do believe, is nearly done as well. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys choose of the list that I'm going to throw up. Uh, and yeah, once again, guys, I can't you know say it enough just how appreciative I, I am of you guys who watch these videos. You know, I absolutely love interacting with you guys and uh, hearing what you got your guys' thoughts are on the games and, and how I play and me my awful commentary. Uh, you know, trust me, I do really love you all. And yeah, thank you so much. It means a massive amount to me and. Yeah, I hope you all have enjoyed Inquisition as much as I have. It's been a ride. It's been a long ride. Probably could have been shorter had I not taken so many breaks in between. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely really loved it for all the time that I have played it. And um, yeah. So thanks thanks once again, guys. And I'm very much looking forward to, like I said, uh, seeing what, what comes next. So I hope you all have a wonderful day, guys. Hope you have all, all have enjoyed the ride. I certainly have. And I will catch you all in the first episode of whatever game, whatever game we have next. So thanks again, guys. Once again, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.